Hey everybody, welcome back to Monroe Live. Today is a big day. Um, I'm introducing Julian Eights, one of our top benchmarking engineers. Um, I put you as a lead on this project because it was so important. And if you're wondering where we're sitting, we are sitting on top of the structural battery pack. And it really is quite amazing. When we dropped this from the car, it drew a crowd of roughly 30 to 40 people at Monroe. It is something that we haven't seen really ever. And today we're gonna to walk through what we've already found that we didn't already uncover when Sandy and I went to the Giga Texas factory about two or three months ago. Um, so first of all, it is just phenomenal that these seats are mounted to this battery pack and we were able to drop it from the car. Also, there's a lot of features with the carpet and the wiring and the routing that made this possible. And uh, we're gonna hop off and kind of walk through that. And before we get into all the connections and whatnot, the first thing we noticed was some of the dates on the pack. So right here we have 5-22-22. So we took delivery of this car in late June, I believe on June 25th. So this pack, it looks like it was quality checked because this, uh, um, this marker matches the, the, uh, the marker that's, that goes around on these self-piercing rivets. And if we pull it up even for, further, we notice high pot. So our battery guys said this is the high potential test that they do to make sure that all of the connections are made. And then look at the label right here. Model Y, Texas, General Assembly 1, seat on pack, subline. So this guarantees that I do indeed owe Sandy a steak dinner because when, when we first saw these seats on the pack, I said, no way they're gonna mount the seats in the carpet in the center console and then shove it up in the car. There you go, Sandy Monroe, I owe you a dinner. But when we look at the top cover, it's a multi-piece Taylor welded blank design. So here's a Taylor welded blank. Uh, this front portion right here is actually thicker than this thinner portion right here. And here's where the blank is welded before it's stamped. Then it comes, comes to this point and it gets thicker for the portion that's running for the seat structure and the seat riser portion. And then it gets thin from here to the back. On the Model 3 and the Model Y, these were threaded fasteners. They're now SPR, self-piercing rivets. This allows them to be low profile. And then the seal is not an RTV seal, so I expected it to be a sticky seal. This is all that is protecting uh, water from intruding from the outside of the car into the inside of the car. It's this large, I don't know, what would you call it, Julian, PUR? Uh, yeah, I would assume that's probably some type of a urethane. So these are our first observations, particularly the structure of the pack, when it was made, um, how it's assembled. And now, Julian, I'm going to let you take over and talk through the fastener interface to the body while we're out here. Sure. Uh, so uh, from a removal standpoint, this was uh, pretty straightforward. There were very few bolts uh, inside the vehicle that needed to be removed to drop the pack. Uh, primarily, uh, as you can see here, uh, we were dealing with uh, mainly bolts around the perimeter. There were 38 total that were uh, holding the pack to uh, the body itself. Uh, you can see a few of them here. Um, some of them were a little bit deeper uh, inside, um, so they were a little bit harder to reach, but still it was uh, pretty straightforward removal. Uh, we then had them running uh, along uh, the edges and uh, toward the rear of the battery pack here. Uh, there were, uh, I believe, four uh, bolts uh, that were connecting the uh, center console and the instrument panel on the interior of the vehicle. So those were uh, fastened in. Let's show those over here. That's right. So there's this small riser right here, which interface with two feet coming down from the instrument panel, is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, two stamped steel brackets, which we can show on the interior of the vehicle. And one of the uh, unique features about how the battery pack with the seats and the center console is loaded in and then assembled is uh, right here, the feet of those brackets would meet. And if you come to the rear, you can see an additional two bolts that are used to hold the center console in place. 
uh, in order to make it easier to deck this, once the battery is installed, the center console is slid forward on rails to engage with the instrument panel. And you can see there then that those two bolt uh, interfaces now are engaging with a bracket that's on the battery pack itself. So that'll hold the center console in place. You then put a piece of trim over it, snaps right in place, and that's all set to go. Uh, then you can go ahead and uh, bolt the, uh, or handle your low voltage connections from the center console to the instrument panel. Yeah, and Julian, I got a question for you. So you said 38 bolts plus mm -hmm. two, so about 40 fasteners to secure the pack. Uh, yeah, so it's 38 uh, securing the pack, including there were four just above the penthouse here. Uh, you can see here, these interfaced with the rear uh, giga casting on the vehicle. Uh, these were the only uh, real, I'll say, structural bolts on the interior of the vehicle. The rest of them were for uh, securing things like the center console uh, in place. And how does this, the penthouse compare to the Model Ys and Model 3s we've seen before? It looks similar yeah. with this MVH pad. It looks like it's an AB. So you have absorption and barrier. Absorption barrier, that's what we call for MVH. But it looks similar, kind of unrelated to... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look uh, much, much different from what we've seen on previous Tesla packs. Yeah, and one thing I want to talk about for how the seal interfaces with the body. So you do have the some stampings on the the rails going, you know, fore aft. But right here is where the rear giga casting is. And notice that the shape, the witness mark from the pressure of that giga casting pressing against the seal is really unique. And the one area we noticed where it could be a potential problem is right here where it transitions from this flat surface down, there's not as much of a witness mark. So we were wondering if this wasn't pushing as hard here. So you notice this is smashed real hard. So it had a real good compression. And then right here, it still has a lot of, uh, a lot of push and comp you know, compliance to give. It may have done its job perfectly fine, but this is an area where I'd want to monitor if I was Tesla to make sure that, you know, we're getting good compression here. Um, we did notice that the cover itself looks like it has some sort of clear coating, like a, like a clear powder coating. Uh, we're not sure what that's for, most likely so that this sticks real well, because if it was just metal, you may have to do like a plasma treat right. before you shoot this seal on. And I didn't realize that this console slid. So I was still in Italy with Sandy and that's where Sandy's at today. If you're wondering where Sandy Monroe's at, he's still in Italy for work. Um, the fact that this console slides back and forth is, is really kind of wild. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're gonna move under the car and show you where all of these uh, pieces and parts interface with the body. Now, the first thing I wanna say is that it's absolutely mind blowing to be standing under a vehicle on a hoist and have absolutely nothing for the floor structure. Um, at Monroe and Associates, we've seen the evolution of the automotive industry for the past 30 to 40 years. Myself with 17 years at Monroe and Associates, I've come from a background of benchmarking vehicles where you'd have hundreds of stamp parts for the, for the where this front mega giga casting is, hundreds and hundreds of parts in the back. And the level of refinement and integration is incredible. And before we get into where the battery interface is, Tesla is not wasting any opportunity to integrate the casting for multiple mounting features. And Eric, if you can come over here, even this small little fin right there, it, there's a little fin of aluminum with two riv nuts um, with two bolts holding this, this bracket that's holding the low voltage line, I mean the high voltage line for the AC compressor, as well as a, a thermal tube. It's just amazing the amount of integration that we're seeing here. So Julian, you wanna actually hit on uh, where the pack interfaced with the castings in the side. Sure. Uh, so as we were uh, previously uh, stating on the, uh, near the penthouse uh, for the battery itself, we had the four bolts. Uh, you can see up here the matching holes through which the bolts were inserted. 
Uh, so those go right here into uh, this uh, sort of lateral portion of the rear Giga casting. In order to access those, we did have to remove the rear seat, which sits on top of the black uh, steel bracket that you can see. Uh, in addition, over here, there were a few low voltage connections, uh, as well as the charge port uh, connection going into the battery that needed to be removed. Uh, but overall, it was a fairly uh, minimal uh, process to uh, disengage all the connections in the rear here. Uh, up toward the front, uh, you can see these stamped brackets here uh, near the uh, HVAC ducts. Uh, the bottom uh, is where the uh, bolts to the battery engage. Uh, those are uh, the only two bolts on the interior in the front of the vehicle that need to be removed. Uh, outside of that, there were a number of low voltage connections. Uh, each of the front seats had to be disengaged. Uh, this is one of the uh, connectors that ran to the center console, uh, USB inline connection. Um, so overall, it's uh, compared to dropping uh, the pack for like the plaid that we did outside of the standard, um, ensuring that the contactors are open, uh, doing all of our high voltage safety checks before disengaging all the bolts. There was actually minimal additional work required to remove this battery pack just from uh, an interior removal standpoint. There were only a few trim pieces. Yeah, so can you walk through the trim panels you removed? I see these two trim panels yep. are removed and then yeah, so the, uh, in the uh, driver and passenger footwell here, this is actually where some of the carpet that was present when uh, Corey and I were on the seats, uh, this is where they folded up into. Uh, there was on the driver and the passenger side just a, a clip that helped engage with the uh, insulating foam underneath. Uh, outside of that, there was just a lower A-pillar uh, trim piece that needed to be removed so that we could uh, peel back some of the... Um, uh, driver and passenger side uh, seat harnesses. Uh, and then in the rear, uh, again, just to get access to the uh, charge port and the low voltage connections, we just needed a, uh, a lower uh, trim piece to be removed there. Uh, outside of that, there wasn't a whole lot that needed to be uh, taken out of the vehicle. Yeah, so our plan for this Model Y is to first get that battery cover off. So our next steps is removing the carpet, the center console, the ducting, and the seats. We're gonna do a, a short assessment of the pack itself, minus all of the lines and the, the cooling tubes. I believe this weighed 1,200 pounds. Do you know the exact weight, Julian? Uh, yeah, it was uh, 1,198 pounds. Okay. That's with everything you see here. Everything we see here. Yep. Which is incredible because a couple of the other EVs we have in this building, we have a Rivian over here, we have three or four other EVs we can't talk about. The batteries will weigh twice that, just the batteries. No seat, no carpet, no trim. And then our goal this week is to get this top cover off. I know the whole world is, is wanting to see how they're actually securing these, these 4680 cells. Uh, to the top cover, we think is probably going to be very difficult to peel this cover off, most likely destroying the cover. Um, but we'll see how that goes. And as for the rest of the Model Y, um, we received one of the first Model Ys in 2020. It happened to be red. And we want to thank Alex from Florida because we technically didn't have a Model Y on order. Um, but we have a, an amazing following on Monroe Live. And Alex from Florida, he wanted to admit his last name, reached out to us and says, hey, I have a Texas Model Y coming. Do you guys want to take the, the order over? So we did pay full price. And um, I flew down to Florida uh, the previous Sunday to take delivery of it because Monroe and Associates and my name are on the car. Um, we got the vehicle here and thanks to our great team, we got this out in a matter of days. We're also going to do a comparison of what has changed. When we opened the frunk, um, I noticed that the super manifold and super bottle and the, um, the high voltage AC compressor heat pump, they've already made some improvements on how the routing of the high voltage line uh, goes in the bay. So Tesla is always continually improving. And we're going to document all of those micro level improvements from our Model Y we received in 2020 to this very, you know, mid-year 2022 Model Y. 
And it's this level of improvement, this level of integration that we love to find. And really the only way to truly get there, to go beyond just benchmarking, you have to have context that goes back not only a few years, but decades to, to truly uh, understand how amazing it is to see a vehicle with no floor and the seats mounted to the, the structure on the top of a pack. Um, Julian, do you have any final thoughts on, on, on this whole process, getting this out and uh, what you think? Uh, overall, uh, it was um, uh, much more straightforward than I was expecting. Uh, I think it was, uh, it, especially when we had it removed and took a look at uh, how it could lift back up into the vehicle, seeing what the assembly process may look like. Uh, I, I think it's incredibly well done. Um, there are uh, a lot of considerations here just in terms of uh, ease of assembly uh, that I, I think were uh, achieved very well. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what's inside the battery pack itself. Yeah. And one last thing, we are selling the 4680 cells just like we did on the Model Y back in 2020. There is way less of them. So we think there's roughly 800 to 850 cells. We'll, we'll know the final count. So they are kind of expensive. I know some people have kind of choked at the $800 price point, but they're actually selling like crazy. So uh, though you can pre-order those cells on MonroeLive.com. There'll be a link in the description. Um, we're already 25 to 30% through uh, selling the amount of cells that we want to. And other than that, we really appreciate everybody for subscribing. We're approaching 300,000 subscribers and we're gonna dedicate probably six to 10 episodes just to this Model Y. So this is just the first one, the pack out. Sandy Monroe will be back on Friday this week. So you'll probably see him for the cover off battery uh, with some of our new faces here at Monroe like Julian. So thanks for watching and have a nice day.